Hello, my name is Karen, and the artists that I chose to research are Cristo and Jean Claude. So, this is their first collaboration. They mostly do temporary environmental art, and they just do art for art's sake. A uh, great quote by Jean Claude is We do not build messages, we do not build symbols, it's only a work of art, nothing else. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons why I really like uh, their works of art, um, just because you can really interpret it however you want. Uh, Jean-Claude and Christo have said multiple times that they have no deeper meanings behind any of their works, um, and yeah, they just do it because they want to. Uh, so this is stacked oil barrels and dockside packages. Um, they used oil barrels and large rolls of industrial paper covered with a tarp uh, and then which they secured with rope. All the materials were borrowed from dock workers and they just used machinery and cranes to stack them into large sculptures. And I think this is a great example of what to expect from them just because they take a lot of these elements from their first collaboration and you'll be seeing them in future projects that they worked on. So this is a wrapped Reichstag, and the Reichstag is one of Berlin's most famous landmarks, um, and they wrapped it with 1,076,390 square feet of thick woven polypropylene fabric uh, with an aluminum surface, so it has that nice uh, shiny look to it, and then they use 9.7 miles of blue polypropylene rope. Um, which is probably my favorite part of this just because it emphasizes the form of the building, which I feel like otherwise you would have overlooked. So I really like this one because of that. And they use 90 professional climbers and 120 installation works. So this just kind of comes to show that a lot of their works are just like created by them. They need a lot of help in order to make these come to life. Uh, and they also took a long time. Um, so they came up with the idea in 1971 and then they finally were able to do it in 1995. Uh, and the reason for this is because they needed a lot of permits and permission in order to make this happen. And here is a top view. As you can see, they covered the entire building with that fabric. Uh, and here's another one of their wrapped projects. Um, this is the Pont Neuf, which is uh, the oldest bridge in Paris. And again, this one took 10 years because they need all those permits and permission in order to create this. And as you can see, it's actually a really big bridge on that right image. You can see the tiny people on top of it. Um, and my favorite part about this is just the cool effect that the fabric makes. Um, I just really like those vertical lines that are created and then again they use rope uh, to kind of emphasize the shape of it which again I feel like would be overlooked um, so it kind of just brings it to a more basic form without like distracting details uh, that are engraved in the bridge and then I also really like the contrast in that second image from the dark hollow areas and the lightness of the fabric I think it gives it this really cool effect. And I think the negative space helps emphasize those vertical lines even more. And then here is the London Mastaba. Uh, as you can see, it is similar to their first collaboration. They used oil barrels, um, but this time a lot more. Uh, they used 7,506. And the way that they did this one is that they used a floating platform, uh, which they attached a scaffolding frame and then they stack the barrels on outside of the frame. But yeah, I really like this one just because it seems so out of place uh, with super bright colors. And it's just, you know, in the middle of a lake. So it's very interesting. I think it's definitely an eye catcher for sure. Um, and you can see it's also really, really tall. On that first image, you can see these two little people on the side of it. And this was their first major public artwork in the UK. Uh, yeah. Oh, and here are some of the Mastaba collages. And one thing to know about all of their works of art is that 
They are independently funded, so they accept no scholarship or donation or, you know, fund from any other place. Uh, a way that they do get their funds is by selling uh, collages, drawing, gill models, and even early works or original lithographs. And Cristo creates all of these himself. Um, Jean-Claude mostly deals with the business side, while Cristo kind of does this side of like the drawing and sketches. So this is Surrounded Islands, uh, which is personally one of my favorites. So they surrounded 11 islands with this bright pink fabric. Um, and I just really love this one. It's so fun and playful. Like, who would have thought to wrap these islands that are so small and, you know, would usually go by unseen? So, a little bit more about these islands uh, is that they were draped with 6.5 million square feet of propylene fabric. And they had a crew of over 400 people. And they had to obtain permits from at least eight different agencies. For example, marine biologists, ornithologists, mammal experts, marine engineers building contractors, so many different types of people um, in order for them to do this safely. And another amazing thing about Cristo and Jean-Claude's artworks is that they do care about the environment. And you may think that this is probably harmful to the environment, but uh, in reality, they end up leaving the area that they work on better than it was before. Uh, for example, they removed about 40 tons of trash that was around these islands, such as refrigerator doors, tires, kitchen sinks, uh, mattresses. And yeah, and then they donate or recycle all the materials that they used afterwards, um, even with like the the previous wrapped projects that they did. And yeah, again, this was also independently funded, which by the way, it was $3.1 million dollars. <laughs> Um, and that top image is an example of the collage uh, that Cristo created. Um, but yeah, that is everything. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed.